at what point, what happens to a chess player when they go from an inability to play multiple boards simultaneously to being able to play multiple boards simultaneously? What is the sort of framework or thinking or, ex or, or experience that someone built up that allows them to do something like that, which to the average person seems like a Rain Man-like feat? You know, I think it's different for every chess player. I mean, one of the beautiful things about chess is that you can approach it so many different ways. And to be world class, what you need to do, essentially, is express the core of your being through the art. I think that's just this is true of many arts, and that's probably something we'll get into more deeply. Um, so you can have a very mathematical person who plays chess mathematically. You can have a very musical person who plays chess musically. Someone might be much more kinesthetic, like myself, and sort of a, a feeling for flow and hidden harmonies and and almost a physically energetic relationship to chess. Mm -hmm. um, when I first learned to play chess, when I was six years old in Washington Square Park, it was, it was a battle. I loved the feeling of, of, the, of just going to, into a fight with someone and finding these hidden harmonies and finding where these animal pa passions mixed with this technical complexity. And when I get late, much later, when I got much better playing simuls, um, it, it was sort of a higher level manifestation of that same kind of dynamic. I mean, for me, playing simuls was it's not something akin to juggling a lot of balls and and all of the to each chess. I wasn't playing forty different games, for example, separately. The flow of all forty games would sort of coalesce into one larger sense of flow. And it was actually really interesting. Whenever, so often, when I'd, I'd give a simul and there'd be a, a youth competition, and the, the winners of the youth competition would play against me. And so sometimes kids would be, would cheat. They'd really want to beat me, so they would cheat. So I'd be walking around this big thing, and then I'd get to the table, and they'd have shifted the position to try to win, because if they could win, it would be a big thing. <laughs> and my experience when that happened was of as if you had, imagine you had like 40 balls up in the air, and suddenly they would all crash onto the floor. Yeah. And, and I, I would know that they had changed the position, not by reaching the board and remembering what the position was and then seeing they changed it. It would initially be this feeling of the energetic flow had been interrupted. Um, and then I'd have to reverse engineer myself back to that one, that one game, that one component of the flow, and then I'd remember the game, and then I would remember exactly what the position had been, and then I'd say, ha, ha, this was the position. Um, and then it would take me two or three times going back around to get that all the balls back up in the, up in the air and to get back to the energetic flow. So actually, for me, giving simuls sort of felt similar to playing chess, one chess game. Um, but that was my own relationship to it. I think that probably if you ask 10 different very strong chess players that all give somewhat different answers.